wouldn't be the person that I am today with all of the things that my younger self went through. Everything that happens is going to pay off in the future. My name is Jack Farzan, I use she, they pronouns, and I'm a site reliability engineer at Adobe on the Content Authenticity Initiative. I'm the person that um, deploys web servers and databases. I automate um, a lot of like internal processes, and if something's broken um, in the middle of the night, I'm the person that people call to fix it. I am bisexual and non-binary, and I am also of Iranian descent. My parents are from Iran, and because gender is um, a, a social thing, um, it, it depends a lot on context, I definitely don't identify as an American woman, but I am much more comfortable with describing myself as an Iranian woman because I do identify more with that experience. I grew up on the Jersey Shore. The Jersey Shore is not necessarily the most diverse community. There were a lot of Irish people, there were a lot of Italian people, there were a lot of Irish Italian people. It was one of those things where a lot of people grappled with their like personal identities after they left the area. I was very much like a quiet child. I was like really in my own head. I like played a lot of video games where you like create your own character basically. I made a character that I just like really I thought she was like the, the coolest thing on the planet. And I ultimately found myself like really wanting to be like her. I ended up deciding like the concept, I was like, wouldn't it be like so funny if I made it a character that was bisexual? Like, just like, you know, wouldn't that be so funny? Like I'm not bisexual, but like she is. And we'll may maybe I'll, you know, experience that vicariously through her, but like, I'm not bisexual though. Obviously I realized a few things about myself. So I think I was about like, uh, 16 or 17 at the time and I did have like one or two friends or classmates that were like out at the time and I always remember having like a, an experience of oh that's really cool for them that they realize that about themselves and like maybe like I wish that I could have a discovery like that but like I don't think I'm like that though. I was always into video games and growing up I was actually really into like creating visual art, like I did digital painting, but I didn't necessarily come from the most financially stable background and I, you don't necessarily become an artist to get rich or whatever. Not that that's what I wanted, but for me, I thought, oh, well, if I want to work in games, then they always need programmers. That's a good way to approach that. I decided I wanted to get a degree in computer science and I decided I wanted to also study art on the side if I could do that. For my current role, my experience as an artist does not necessarily play in my day-to-day -day life. However, there are plenty of roles in tech that do encourage and support that sort of background. Things like user experience design, things like graphic design, many things that I am not aware of, I'm sure. But I often also like to tell people that if you want to pursue any career, it often helps to boil down what is the core of the thing that you like doing. And for me, it was problem solving and it was liking to know a little bit about a lot of things versus there's plenty of roles in Steam where you're required to know a lot about one thing. Having that sort of awareness of yourself and the things that you like doing will sort of help you figure out what sort of role would work well for you. I sort of had a really traditional education background. I did five years at a university. And while I was there, I got a bachelor's degree in computer science. I got a bachelor's degree in visual art. I got a master's degree in computer science and I did two years of internships. I guess when I put it like that, it's less traditional, but I was planning on getting the most bang for my buck out of my time there, so to speak. All of the additional knowledge that I needed to know, I was able to pick up on the job. I sort of like tripped and fell into this particular niche because, you know, when you're going into college, like when you're a high school, you don't necessarily think like, oh, I want to fix other people's like broken code all the time. But as I 
grew older, like as I started like progressing through college where I just started with a regular computer science degree and they don't really make you focus on anything until later. I realized that, you know, the gaming industry is not necessarily stable. They deal with a lot of layoffs. They deal with a lot of like insane hours. Exceptionally hard to be someone that's not a man in that industry. So I started thinking like, I don't know if this is the best thing to do. And I ended up with several internships that started to nudge me towards the sort of work that I do currently. By the time I had a resume put together for my first job out of college, that happened to be the sort of like the, the job that I got. It was like working with servers, doing stuff in a terminal versus just regular software development. When I was in university, I was one of like five non-men in my computer science class. Um, so I didn't really have great expectations of what I would deal with coming out the other end, but I was really stubborn. So I was like determined. I was like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to carve out a space for myself. If there isn't already one. Before I was non-binary, I was a tomboy. I always had like more, more guy friends than girlfriends. I felt more comfortable around masculine people. So I think for me going into a man dominated class like that, I was like, this is easy. Like, this is what I grew up with. Once I decide that I want to do something, I just pursue that thing. I was also at an engineering school. So if I really wanted to pivot that badly, I sort of would have to reconsider a whole lot more things. So I think I basically trapped myself a little bit. I was there and I had my goal in science and I was going to accomplish it no matter what. I've had environments where people feel comfortable to make inappropriate jokes in my presence, like whether it's about women or whether it's about like other like trans coworkers. Thankfully, I'm not in those sorts of places anymore, but there are also lots of environments that are like very welcoming. In my current role, I do feel very comfortable being open about who I am. And I'm also much more comfortable with calling out behavior that is not okay. A lot of times you're just afraid, like if I say something, am I going to be unemployed tomorrow? Workplaces are very hierarchical. So a lot of times if it's like your direct superior or like your adjacent direct superior that says something off color, it's not a great position to be in because you, like no matter what you're going to lose. A lot of people don't necessarily know any better, unfortunately, and a lot of environments you have to sort of just like approach someone and say like, hey, like maybe you didn't necessarily mean this thing in this way, but that's actually like a hurtful view to have. And you should at least consider like thinking before you say something like that. You have to like approach someone in like a respectful manner and you can't necessarily call them out like in the middle of a room. You got also need to wait for yourself to like calm down a little bit first because there's been a lot of times where like someone has said something and I, you know, felt the blood rush to my head and I was like, okay, I definitely need to talk to them about this, but maybe not right this second because I'm just going to scream and that's not good for anyone. But then there's also things where someone will say something where like you might have to kind of just like swallow it and decide that like, okay, this is something that I'm going to know that this person thinks and I'm just going to have to treat them differently because of it. My current workplace, I do feel very comfortable with it. It is a very large company. So there are like are plenty of other LGBT people um, in the area. At previous roles, I've had like really bad experiences where I was basically sexually harassed. Hopefully no one has to deal with that in their everyday life. But then there's also been like totally neutral experiences, microaggressions where people will say like, oh, you use like she, they, like, what does that mean? Like, why do you do that? Without context, it's a harmless question, but um, in the context of a workplace, it's like, I don't necessarily want to be the one fielding these questions for everyone. A lot of it is about who you know. Cishet white men know a lot of cishet white men. The average cis like het white male employee has a leg up on any other candidate that's not one of those things. Because so many of those men are used to being in these situations, they have family and like in, in these sorts of careers and things. There's just a lot of things that a minority candidate would not even think about, like how to negotiate a salary, how to write a resume, things like how to write an email. I remember I've given people advice on like how to write like a, a strongly worded follow-up email because these things are not things that are at the front of people's head. Like you don't get taught that in a college class.
In a lot of these conversations with things like machine learning and AI, a lot of people love to treat like their answer as like, oh, like this algorithm is like saying like this, that, and the other, and it's a computer. So that means that it's not biased. Like it doesn't have any like preconceived notions that a person would have. I love to point out that computers were made by people actually. So yes, these machines and algorithms are incredibly biased. A lot of that is because they are written by one particular kind of person. Ultimately, like tech is part of our society. And if we want to try to achieve a more just society, we need all kinds of people at every level. So that includes diversifying the people who are like creating our tech so that if there's something that a cis white man cannot call out someone who is not that will say like, hey, actually, like, this is a problem. This is a thing that we need to change. This does affect people that are not you. Other than what I think is the obvious of like people of like different backgrounds, races, gender identities, sexualities, what is extremely important in any diverse environment is the ability to receive criticism and like self-reflect on what that criticism was like not stuff like oh you're like you're all your work is terrible or whatever but if you say or do something that can end up hurting someone instead of immediately lashing out and being like oh you're calling me a racist or a sexist and I'm just not that you need to understand that we all say things that can be hurtful to a given group of people or an individual person. That's not necessarily the problem. The problem is not being able to reckon with the fact that you could do a hurtful thing and you just need to be able to say like, okay, I see what you're saying. Let me try to correct this. Other than the minor task of everyone having to be more self-aware of themselves, workplaces need to put a lot of effort into seeking out diverse hires as like the, the first thing that they do. The majority of people in tech right now are cis hat white men. So because that's who they know, that's what they hire, that's what they feel comfortable with, that's who we're going to end up getting. So we need to say, okay, we don't want to only have these kinds of people because we've decided that we do want a diverse environment. We need to like reach out to to like HBCUs. We need to reach out to to like there's plenty of like working groups that are helping uh, minorities get hired in these environments. Um, we need to reach out to like, there, there's plenty of like the groups online, even for like, if, for, for like for trans people, for, for LGBT people in general that are focused on getting hired in tech. We need to reach out to those people first, not even because they're like definitely better or whatever, but because they deserve, um, as much of a chance as like the person that's just like in your, your LinkedIn or whatever. I dream of a world where we stop reacting towards each other out of fear and out of hatred and thinking, I don't understand you. So I'm going to treat you like dirt under my feet. Ultimately, like a, a world that accepts people as they are um, and accepts them as human beings rather than as things to be profited off of. Ultimately, a world that is good for LGBT people is a world that will be good for all. I've learned a lot. I've been through a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of successes, but I have done all of this and gotten to where I am today without any real mentorship. I didn't really have anyone in my family that I could talk to. I didn't really have anyone in my university. I have like never had the boss, for, uh, the same boss for more than one year. And these are a lot of the sorts of roles that like a lot of people get mentorship from. And I had to just sort of like figure everything out along the way. I am happy with my current place. I feel like I'm learning a lot and I'm growing a lot. So for the future, I don't have any sort of like technical goals, but my sort of career related goal that I have currently is to help as many people as possible in the queer and non-white communities uh, get the, the roles that they deserve to at least like, you know, be able to make rent, be able to give money to their families and friends. I want the stability that I have for everyone in these communities that I care about.
if I want to give someone tips for negotiating a job offer, like those, that that doesn't necessarily apply only to tech. That applies to everyone. So that those are the the sorts of skills that I want to make sure that people know about. The only thing that I would want to tell my younger self is to just keep going. I I, I said that I got went into this career because I was stubborn. So you got to be a little bit stubborn. Go into this thing convincing yourself that maybe I don't know what I'm doing, but neither does anyone else. And I just really have to act like I am the shit and other people will believe me. Definitely don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to say that you don't know something because everyone knows that, or at least most people know that nobody knows everything. And a lot of people will respect your ability to recognize like, oh, I don't know this rather than just try to pretend and obviously not know something. Don't be afraid to play the game a little bit because like, you know, there's like office politics, which is like unfortunate. Like people will like be a little bit arrogant towards each other sometimes. You need to like be as good of a cheerleader for self that like all of these like white men are for each other. Mm -hmm.